Greetings, Apostles for White Wellbeing from the Blue Ninja. As I said earlier today, on a short little video, didn't quite make it to Troy. Um, as, I as I suspected, didn't quite wake up with enough time. Uh, so tomorrow will be Troy Day. Um, but back in the West, looks like the steady flow of anti-whiteism is always coming. So I want to talk about that a little bit. A couple other things. Um, Larry Bird, to celebrate him as a great Western man, an athlete, basketball player, as most of us know. Um, and, uh, and then some anti-whiteism from Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Um, but first, all my warmest and best love, of course, to Wilhelmine and Matthew Bayer, the Blue Ninja 2. Special love and prayers to Maddie Bayer for the leg. Brad C., the Blue Ninja 3. All my love to you as well, brother, to everybody else out there. Um, Raymond Foster, Irish Ice, Art Acrobats. Um, Elaine Sabatino. Um, Sorella Bella. Giz the Eunuch. No White Gill Clips, Nancy Drew, Shauna Shaw, Vivian Fire. Made a comment uh, just on the last uh, Troy video. Really appreciate that. Good to hear from you, dear one, Vivian Fire. Um, and DHMC, Justin, Anna, Yield European, Coastal Rains, everybody else. So, um, to start off with here, folks, um, give me just one second. Okay, got a little bit of Larry Bird stuff queued up here, folks. Um, I want to pay tribute and honor to a great West man that we all know, the great Larry Bird. Um, and as we all know, we have to give ourselves honor. It's not coming from the media. That's for sure. Who's going to do it? Well, of course, we are the ones to do it. We are the source of white positivity, as we all know. Um, so people that say... Hey, look, there's all these celebrations for non-whites. Where's the stuff for whites? Well, it's good to point that out and show that society and the media is anti-white. Um, but then we have to realize, of course, what we all know, we have to help other people realize it's not going to come from the mainstream. Do not look <laughs> to anti-whites to be white positive. Do not look to anti-whites to give us kudos as whites. Obviously, it's, it's silly. It's never going to happen. So we have to be the ones to do it, as we all know. It can happen. We have to look to ourselves to do it. So this is where the white celebration is, folks, here right now. I'm going to give you a little dose of it right here. Um, and just because it's not in the mainstream doesn't mean it's not happening. All that matters is that it's right here, folks. This is where we know the source is of our whole civilizations and our people. So, um, so here is celebrating white people right here, Western kind, Larry Bird. Doesn't get a whole lot greater than that. Um, and uh, so Larry Bird, one thing that got me uh, interested in, in him lately is learning that he is pretty much the only player that got the best of Michael Jordan. I've been watching some stuff uh, lately and learned that. I did not know that. Larry Bird is basically the only NBA player that can say that he got the best of Michael Jordan. As most of us know, Michael Jordan is insanely competitive and pretty much got the best of anyone that challenged him. Um, whether it be a, a personal rivalry or challenging his team, whatever it may be, Jordan, we know, pretty much got the best of everyone in basketball. Larry Bird is the only one that I've recently found out that can say otherwise. Michael Jordan never really got the best of them, um, which is saying a lot. Larry Bird is the only one that could say he actually topped Michael Jordan in a lot of ways. So that's saying a lot, as we all know, um, especially basketball fans. So Larry Bird, my new favorite basketball player, and very arguably the greatest of all time. And, of course, a white 
Western as they come. Man, grew up in small town, um, French Lake, Indiana, on a farm as country boy, all American, Western as it gets, as we know. So, um, so Larry Bird, very interesting. So I'm just going to show a little bit of, um, a little bit of Larry Bird here. Don't need to go through all his accolades. Um, that it's a, it's a long list of all his accolades and why he's the greatest. Um, I'll, I'll forego with, with <laughs> going on about why he's the greatest. Um, but what I do want to show mainly is one little example of anti-whiteism from Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Um, show just a little clip of Larry Bird and then Kareem Abdul-Jabbar giving him a little anti-white jab. And notice that this is the opposite of what I talked about before with the owner back in 2014 or so of the LA Clippers, Donald Sterling, um, presumably a white guy that said something bad about a dark non-white Irvin Magic Johnson. And he got banned from the NBA for life as an owner. <laughs> got completely his career ended for life. Um, obviously treated very seriously. And as we know that I talked about before, that is, um, it's because it was, it's anti-white narrative. Um, and, uh, of course, when the opposite happens, if a dark non-white or any non-white talks bad about a white, well, what happens? Nothing happens. In fact, it's usually encouraged, which again shows that everything is anti-white in the media. So here's the contrast, folks, that um, a dark non-white, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, um, given, given Larry Bird just, just a little jab as, as, as for being white. And uh, if it were the other way around, it would be very severe, obviously. But in this case, it's, it's a non-white saying it about a white, uh, something insulting, something derogatory, um, and it's just let's lie because it's against the white and we all know that it's anti-white plain and simple um so i just want to show that um and uh and just a little bit of larry bird clip before that but pay attention to kareem, kareem abdul jabbar and his little his little jab on larry bird right at the beginning of of his little uh, section here. And he does give Larry Bird credit, but he gives him that jab. So watch this. Shaq never really got the chance to play against Larry Bird, which is unfortunate, because I don't think it would have taken him so long to recognize great. It's like a Michelangelo sculpture the right there of a Western NBA man. champion Kareem Abdul-Jabbar battled Bird on numerous occasions while playing with the Showtime Lakers. Bird got the better of him in the 1984 finals and took another two in a decade that was largely dominated by the purple and gold. Kareem spoke about how Larry might have been the best he had played against and said that How good was Michael Bird? Jordan? People, I don't think people, people, people look at him and think, yeah, oh, he's a white guy, slow guy. Chubby white guy, he wore <laughs> us out, man. You know, because he just, this was, this muscle here, the one between his ears, Yeah, that was his best, you know, because he, he made the three-pointers and he had assists and rebounded, steals. He was always at the right place at the right time on the court. You know, one of the great players I, you know, I had the opportunity to play against. 11-time All-Star Charles Barkley, a Rick. Okay, folks, if you all caught that, which I'm sure you did, right at the beginning he says, chubby white guy. Oh, he just seemed like a chubby white guy. But he was so surprisingly good. So it was sort of minor. Um, and they did give him the respect, one of the greatest players, he said, right from Kareem's mouth, as all the other superstars in the NBA all give Larry Bird credit, which is good, uh, for being so great. But he had to get that little jab in there, chubby white guy. And, um, because number one, this is just accepted, this is just what happens in the media. 
a lot of people feel pressured to do it, even if they don't necessarily want to do it. That's a lot of uh, the reason it happens. Um, and uh, but in this particular case, he just he just makes a quick little anti-white comment there, and uh, it's just it's laughed at. It's which is means it's accepted. And it's even encouraged. And um, so we see definitely there's no negative repercussions. Uh, there's no discipline or punishment coming down from the NBA or anything like that, obviously. So a far different reaction when it's a non-white saying something negative and insulting about a white. Um, it's just accepted. It's just it's just allowed to slide or it's a lot of times it's actually encouraged. Um, this is part of the ridicule of whites that's been allowed in the anti-white narrative. Um, so, so again, just all the more proof that the anti-white narrative has dominated media for so long and that society, the institutions, the media are all anti-white. Um, and, um, so one, speaking of, of Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, one other thing I just saw today, tonight, is just a, a story today, apparently, um, from CNN about, um, which is an anti-white story about the NFL. No surprise from CNN because the whole network is anti-white and they're just made this whole very anti-white story about the R word in the NFL and diversity quote and some other things. And who did they feature on it on this little interview that I saw? Kareem Abdul-Jabbar commenting on the NFL, <laughs> which he did not play in or take any part in that was not his sport but um you know so may not be too well qualified to talk about it but he is anti-white as we'll see even more confirmation of and that is why the anti-whites that run networks like cnn will pick people like kareem simply because they're anti-white anyone that's going to run their mouths about the anti-white narrative any anti-white network will be happy to put them on kareem abdul jabbar in this case okay go ahead put them on put them on the show and let them just spout off the anti-white narrative left and right so that's all that's the only reason why he gets on it has nothing to do with the nfl or does he know anything about the topic we know that's rarely the case it's just is this person going to be anti-white and support the anti-white narrative and perpetuate it. That's the qualification to be on mainstream media, basically, um, as we all know. So um, CNN, Anderson Cooper, doing a little interview of Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, very anti-white about the NFL. Just laughable, folks. They're talking about RACISM and diversity, D-I-V-E-R-S-I-T-Y. That's kind of a bad word, too, now in the you know lack of this diversity so-called in the nfl and it's just laughable because we know sports are dominated by dark non-whites now no accident they've been almost entirely white erased so it, listen to them talk in this little bit here and it's just comical because they're kind of stuttering they just they know it's bs folks um what they're saying and um they're talking about management in this particular thing. NFL, obviously the players are mostly dark non-whites in the NFL, so they can't complain about lack of dark players in the NFL or any other sport, the NBA, that's for sure. Uh, so they got to move to management. Oh, that's just any little section that might have some a few whites remaining. They got to single that out. Oh, there's not enough diversity there. If there was one white left in the entire NFL, you can bet they would say, oh, that, that, you know, position, whether it be playing, managing, whatever it may be, oh, that, that, that particular 
area of the NFL, that position, oh, that's that's not diverse. That's not diverse enough. If there's one white person, it's not going to be diverse enough. Anti-whites want zero, as we all know. So now it's just laughable. And I looked at the comments on this little video, and people are catching on, folks. People are like, whoa. They're just like, it's too obvious now. People are like, uh, okay, complaining about so-called R-I-C-I-S-M, diversity. Wait a minute. People are like, dude, it's it's like pretty much all dark, not white. In the NFL and the NBA, most of these comments we're talking about since Kareem was a basketball player. And they're just like, hold up. No, this is not flying anymore. Most people didn't quite have our lexicon to describe it. And so that's where I made a comment to put the nail on the head, as we all do, what people are trying to say. And these, a lot of these comments, you can tell when people are trying to say, hey, look, yeah, there's there's no diversity because there's hardly any whites anymore. You know, and they're saying R-A-C-I-S-M, bull crap. You know, they, they've, they're seeing through it now. But they don't, most people still, most average people seem to not have the right words that we have in our lexicon to really put the nail on the head. And it's just like when I first heard the great Jason Kuna say it on his No White Guilt channel, of course. When I first heard him say anti-white, oh, man, I knew that was it right away. The instant I heard it. It took me like 0.2 seconds to adopt it. <laughs> Literally. As soon as I heard it, 0.2 seconds later, boom, I'm using it from here on out. And that should be the reaction, ideally, with everyone. Um, and especially now, it is so obvious, folks. The anti-whites are just asking for it. They're asking to be put in their place. When they're, when they're talking about organizations like the NFL and the NBA that are almost entirely dark non-white, that have been almost very clearly almost entirely white race over the past several decades, it's so obvious they're asking for it. They're asking to be put in their place. They're showing how much they're losing ground now. Oh, it's just, it's so ripe for the pickings now for us to, for somebody to step on a mainstream and use our lexicon. It's just unbelievable how ripe it is. It can't be any more ripe, folks. We have the golden egg. They're pushing us, they're pushing us. Use it. <laughs> They can't push us anymore. It's it's more than time to do it. It's more than obvious. It's the fruit is more than it's overripe to do this. The op the target is so centered on the bullseye, it can't get any more centered. <laughs> we just it's it's like in basketball, it's an easy basket. It's the easiest basket you can get. In NFL, it's like having a wide open field. There's a touchdown. Just. Run to that touchdown. Just put the ball on the hoop. There's no one there. This is the easiest thing for us now as white positives as we know, folks. This is an example of that. They're just asking for it. They're going to sit there and say, the NFL, yeah, there's not enough diversity. Uh, wait a minute. It's, it's almost entirely white erased. <laughs> They're asking for it. So we all get the idea there. All somebody has to say, folks, Wait a minute, you guys are just anti-white. Kareem, Abdul-Jabbar, Anderson Cooper, CNN in this case. All somebody's got to say, with, with the smallest little bit of a stage, if somebody could get on there and real quick, one of those big networks and just say, hey, you guys are just anti-white. That's all it would take, folks. One time on mainstream, one time, one person utters the word, and I guarantee, I bet, almost anything, it would just, it would just explode. It's so ready to explode, as we know, that it's just, it's like a, a barn full of dynamite. <laughs> Somebody lights a match, it's just going to go boom, the whole thing. And it's going to just spread like wildfire, like the fastest dominoes in the world. And everybody's just going to pick it up like that. Because it's the idea that's ready for it. its the time. Is, it's time has come. More than come. Long past it's coming, as we know. So we get the idea with that. I'm going to play this little thing from um, 
CNN, Anderson Cooper, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, extreme anti-whiteism about the NFL. And notice how they're stuttering because they just know what they're saying is just lines fed to them. It's the most erroneous thing in the world. The anti-whites are out of ammunition in every way, shape, or form. This shows that we got the easiest knockout punch, figuratively speaking. Person is dazed. All we got to do is just push them over with the flick of a wrist, anti-white, and it's over, folks. And the rest will be history, as we all know. So give me one second. Okay, here we go, folks. And notice these people... Anderson Cooper, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar here are like corpses. Um, they're just, they're like drone zombies uh, when they're talking here because, again, they're anti-white. They got nothing left and they just, they just know it's BS. So you can tell. Watch this. Tonight, the NFL faces more disturbing allegations from former head coaches. Hugh Jackson coached the Cleveland Browns until 2018. He now says the team's owner paid him, quote, substantial money to lose games in order to get a better draft pick. The Browns call that categorically false. Meanwhile, the Miami Dolphins owner is refuting a similar claim by their former head coach, Brian Flores, who claims he was offered bribes of up to $100,000 a game. Flores is now suing the league. But as we reported here last night, his accusations go much further. He says a pattern of racism against black coaches exists. Well, 58% of NFL players last season were black. There were only three black head coaches. With the recent firings of Flores and another black head coach, the league is down to just one. Basketball legend Kareem Abdul-Jabbar has spent more than half a century calling out what he sees as injustice. In his latest column for Substack, he writes, What took so long? I'm not referring specifically to Flores' lawsuit, but to making public the racism inherent in the NFL. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar joins me now. Thank you so much for, for being with us. Um, let's talk about the, the Flores lawsuit. First, the allegations of racism. What do you think is behind the lack of black people in management and head coaching positions in, in the NFL? I think that it has uh, a lot to do with uh, familiarity and uh, just having it go along the way it's been going along because uh, the NFL uh, makes a lot of money and they don't see the need to uh, open the doors to uh, minorities. And they think things have gone very well as they have. I mean, there are problems in throughout uh, industries, throughout companies, of a lack of diversity at the very top of the, the corporate pyramid. What, what's particularly noticeable, and which you point out in, in, in your article on Substack, is that it's not as if there's a dearth of black employees in the NFL. Uh, there are people who have, most of the, the players, I mean, are, are black and have experience what working on a football team and know what it's like and you would think in that industry it would be easier to have people moving up from after their their playing years move up through management almost 60 percent of the players in the nfl are uh, black or some other person of color and um the fact that there are so many of them that have stood on the sidelines, uh, Eric Bieniemy and um, uh, Tony Dungy, for, for two examples, were very successful guiding teams uh, to the Super Bowl and winning. So, it, it, I mean, where is the culprit? Where, where, where does the guilt lie in uh, not being able to uh, hire more people of uh, minority status? The NBA has tried it, and it's been very successful for them. Uh, uh, coaching, assistant coaching, uh, people working in the uh, financial aspects of the team, uh, women refs, all of these are considered controversial, and uh, the, the NBA continues to thrive and uh, attract a bigger and bigger uh, audience. So I don't think the NFL has a foot to stand on uh, in answering these questions. It, it's been way too long, and they should do something about it. Sorry, folks. Interrupted by a commercial. 
but we don't even need to see the rest of that. That's I think that's enough. <laughs> enough that I could stomach uh, again um, watching it a second or a third time. Um, it's just it goes on not too far um, past that on that clip of it, and you could just see how um, how just full of crap they are. Uh, it's just laughable. So they're talking about first off these these. Uh, supposedly non-white coaches that were supposedly paid to for their teams to lose so they could get a better draft pick the next year. That has nothing to do with them being non-white, first off. So the whole start of this whole story was just completely, you know, bogus, not founded, no connection there. And they just, it's obvious that they're just, they're just randomly trying to jump to, um, to anti-whiteism. And, um, and then they have to acknowledge first off that the majority of the players in the NFL, just like the NBA are dark, non-white. And it's just like, uh, wait a minute, why are we complaining again? <laughs> they're both kind of have this tone like they're just struggling to read the teleprompter there right because it's like oh my gosh i can't believe they're making us say this on tv yes now the the majority of the players are dark non-whites and yes they're still a problem and they're just like wait a minute <laughs> this doesn't make sense well because the anti-whites that pay them at the, from the top to say those things um are never going to be satisfied until there's zero whites Hey, there's only 90% dark non-whites. It's not 100 yet. And we know the real point there is to get rid of all the whites. And notice how Kareem Abdul-Jabbar kind of hesitates and he says, Oh, there's almost 60% in, in, in the NFL are black or quote POCs, people of color. He hesitates because what he's trying to say is not white. But that doesn't quite sound so good when they say, hey, look, so many of these players are not white. Isn't that great? And it doesn't quite have a good ring to it. So they got to use these other words in the anti-white narrative to try to try to not make it sound as anti-white as it is. So you see him hesitate on that. Um, they're saying, oh, they're, they're dark, non-white, or any other non-white. And they're just saying, you know, he says people of color. Um, and we know what they mean. It's just not white. Just anybody but white. And look, look at that. Look how great it is. So it's as anti-white as it can get when they celebrate and they look at it as a positive thing in the anti-white narrative that if somebody's not white, that's a good thing. The higher the non-white numbers, the better. And what they're having trouble getting around is what they're saying. What they're really saying is the lower the white numbers, the better. That doesn't sound so good. So they're always talking about, look, it's so great to get those non-white numbers up. But now, since they're so high, it's becoming harder and harder to disguise it. That really what they're saying is, hey, look, we think it's great that those white numbers are down. And now they're kind of hemming and hawing and not so enthusiastic um, because that does not sound so good because it is not so good to celebrate the decline of a people. Um, and these two, Anderson Cooper and Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, know that um, just like every other anti-white. So they're stumbling now, folks, as we can hear big time. Um, and... Um, the other thing you heard Kareem say is guilt. Who's the culprit? Where does the, why are there still not more darks, even though they're the majority? Why are there still not more? Why aren't there more? Okay, they dominate the playing aspect of it. Why are there not more in management now? Just every little nook and cranny they can find. Why is this not dark, not white, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Why is this non-white? Why is there still a white over there? We need to get rid of them. That's what they're saying. And you notice, it says, who's the culprit? Um, well, we all know who the culprit is. The culprit is who they're working for, mainly. Anti-whites. Um, and you notice how he used the word guilt. Where does the guilt lie? And I think um, that that is pretty clearly probably no accident that they're using the word guilt. 
um, wherever they can now, folks. That's probably in response to us. Um, probably in response to no white guilt getting out there. Um, and of course, that's a very key part of the anti-white narrative is putting guilt on whites. And so they're trying to do that more than ever. Now it's more obvious than ever. Hey, look, where's the guilt? Specifically using that word. And of course, they're pointing to whites. Hey, it's those whites that are guilty always. Wanting us to feel guilty so we don't defend ourselves. But now whites are like, wait a minute, no. And we're smarter and tougher than that. Say, no way, Kareem. No white guilt. Not going to work on us anymore. Um, and of course, the R word, they use that just to perpetuate it. Anti-white slur, anti-white, anti-white-ism, anti-white narrative. Done. Now, last thing I want to do here to finish up. Went on longer than I planned. My apologies, folks. Um, comments. There's almost a thousand comments on here. And I just decided, hey, let me read some of these comments. Because that, I think we can all agree, was pretty piss poorly presented. And they're just, they're just staggering, stumbling around. Um, it's pretty see-through, I think. See-through false. Anti-white narrative is just being exposed as erroneousness. And I'm looking, I'm thinking, okay, what are people commenting about this? People, people gotta be seeing through this, hopefully. And on, and encouragingly, uh, the comments that I read so far, a few of them, people are seeing through this. Pretty much every comment I looked at, about 10 of these comments, pretty much every single one is seeing through it saying, no, 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 wait a minute, BS. NBA and the NFL are both majority dark non-white now. It's clearly the minority white. That's way, very minority white, extreme minority. Very clear, and people are saying, whoa, no. What, what Kareem and this Anderson Cooper are saying, they're saying, no, 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 sorry, guys. Not going to fly anymore. <laughs> and they're just like, what the heck? This is, this is obviously... BS. People are calling it out. People are just calling it out left and right. Just laughing at it and so forth. Getting upset about it. Calling it out. So I'm like, wow, this is good. This is very encouraging. This is CNN. This is mainstream. People are seeing through it. Um, but I didn't see our lexicon being used on the comments that I read. So I, I could see what they were getting at. They were, they were trying to call it anti-white, essentially. And I just said, wow, great opportunity to make a comment here and just put that word anti-white out there. Call it exactly what it is, what people are trying to say. Give them the word and let it just click for them, just like that. With an audience that is, is getting it like this, it's probably going to click right away. Just like it did with me, just like it did for probably all of you. First time I heard that word, 